back with oh. everybody. This is Real Talk with Maria and Friends. I am Maria and this is Mary. That's right, Maria and Friends. Welcome, welcome back to our show. We have extremely important topic today, extremely important. Um, this times of uncertainty that what's going on in the world everywhere, it's most important for us as believers is remember what what is going on in the Word of God? What does God have to say about anything? So tonight, today's episodes, we named, um, and Jesus said. So today is going to be important for you all to maybe just dig out your Bibles <coughs> and put your DVR on because you want to watch it and watch it and watch it again. Maybe text some of your friends and say, tune in and watch us. But in any case, um, we're going to jump right in because it's so important. We have enough time to cover what we need to say to you. Very important topic, what Jesus said, because if any time you are questioning what's going on in your life or in the world or whatever, best ways to go into the world, like we say, red letters. Because in some Bibles, you know, Christ speaks and it's more red than letters. red letters, right? So what Jesus said. So Mary, why don't you go ahead and start right away? I will, and I, I'm so excited about this. I really am. Because what Jesus says is very important, no matter what he said. But most people, even those people who don't really know the Lord as their Savior, most of them know some of the things that he said, you know, like, blessed are the peacemakers, or come to me, all you are he who are heavy laden. And everybody knows this because we hear it all the time. Love your neighbor as mm -hmm. yourself. Those are the, some of the things that Jesus said. Of course, he said many, many more things. He also said things on the cross. And most people know that when he was dying on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But most people don't really tune into these three most profound, most important words that Jesus spoke. And it's these three words. It is finished. Super important, yeah. I, I you know, it's like, right. Yeah. I, it's like every time I even just think of those mm -hmm. words and, the, and the, the importance of them and what they mean, it just sets me on fire inside. Sure. It really does. It is finished. It is it, finished. It, what did, what does it mean to you? Yeah, but you know what? When you just say, I'm just going to take it a little bit. Uh, it is <clears> such a simple three words and how often we complicate it. Yep. How often? When you know, to me, you're asking me what does it mean to me personally, because to each, you know, something would something that the cross means to you in your private life may be a little bit different what the cross means to me in my private life, and uh, and then globally, of course. But uh, I find great peace and solace, and to me, it means that I can't take anything away from His work. I can't add anything to his work. Whatever I am and whatever I do, wrong or right, to the gospel message, it's irrelevant because it's all about his work. I find great peace in that. I don't know about you, but I do find great peace mm. in it because I can make mistakes. Uh, not I can. I am do. making mistakes. <laughs> we all I do. I am doing, I'm <laughs> making mistakes. I, uh, with, with sin, you know, pe the world right now doesn't like the word sin. Okay? <clears throat> we all like to say, I've made a mistake. Well, sometimes, yes, it's a mistake, and sometimes it's flat out sin. And again, right now, we need to get back to biblical values. We truly do. Because he said it is finished. Whatever I've done wrong, he paid for it. So mm -hmm. I do not have to walk in condemnation. Right. I do not have to walk beating myself up. You know, so many religions in the world, penances, all kinds, you know, what walking on hot coals or mm -hmm. I don't even know what half of, you know, piercing themselves everywhere. Flagellating you yourself. know, la you know, <laughs> all this time. He pierced him. I mean, Christ was crucified. <clears throat> Done deal. Nothing I can add, nothing I can take away. And I am grateful. Amen. For me, that's Amen. at least in Amen. a nutshell. Amen. And and as a mature Christian now, I certainly understand all of that. I do. And I feel the same way. But when I first came to the Lord and I heard that he died for our sins, that's what I heard. He died for our sins. 
All right. I thought to myself, well, if that's true, then why are people still sinning? Why is all this misery still in the world? But why? Why are they still sinning? Right? And then I realized people are still sinning because God didn't take away their free will. Right? Because then we would be robots. I realized that it is finished meant that since Jesus paid the price, mm. or he paid the fine for us, that our, for our sins, we would be forgiven of those sins if we accept him as Christ. You know what you just said, very important, because uh, why are we still sinning, right? Mm. If, he, if it is finished, all of it. It's from misunderstanding, because as humans, mm -hmm. as humans, we always keep the score. Yep. You see, you keep the score. I keep the score. All of you out there in telev television world, YouTube world, wherever you're going to be watching us, just admit it. We keep the score. Admit it and just be done with it because <laughs> right. it's the truth. Okay. <clears throat> Even how good we are or how Christian we are, or how, how holy we are, how righteous we are. You know, it's like somebody rubs you wrong way, you know, whatever, your friends even, your family members. Listen, let's get real for a minute. Let, this is real talk with Maria and friends. We sometimes just plain simple like to keep the score. What have others done and what have we done? Right. And um, somehow, I don't know, we always we end up in a better way. Okay? <laughs> we, we come at the winners. Everybody else, you know, <laughs> oh, they did this and they did that. and But I have not. I have all good intentions. So we, by nature, like to keep score. You see, and God came to get away with your scoreboard. Right. He came to get away with it. And this is why it's so important, to me at least, that he is not keeping score. No. Because, and I'm glad. No, he said. I'm glad that he's not yeah. keeping score. Can you imagine how many times you've done something and if Jesus sitting there and like, uh -oh. uh -huh, okay, uh -oh. Uh -oh. she's, okay, there goes Maria. <laughs> One demerit, two demerit, three demerit. There goes, you know, John Smith or right. whoever. How much pressure it is on you. So I want to speak to somebody right now. I feel stirring of the Holy Ghost right now. I really do. So you have been beating yourself up because you're not measuring up. You say that I'm not measuring up. You're not measuring up to your calling. You're not measuring up to your, you, you're not measuring up to Christ. God died. You, in your mind right now even, it's like, but he died for me. He shed his blood for me. I'm not measuring up. Listen, sister, brother, whoever you are, we will never measure up. That is the truth. <clears throat> we will never measure up. His bar is too high. That's why God, Jehovah, had to send Jesus Christ to level the play field, so to speak. He had to. Yeah. Because you you and I will never measure up. So you sitting right now and not doing something because you've done something wrong yesterday or a month ago. You, somebody you forgot to forgive. Somebody you you somebody maybe you did wrong. That can happen. I am speaking to somebody right now, may, speaking to many for sure. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go, like what? in the Frozen, Disney, <laughs> let, it go. let it go, let it go, like Elsa saying, okay, <laughs> let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, because you're stopping your own destiny, the baggage, right? Right. When you just so said, so it is finished. He took that he baggage, did. right? He did. And, you know, we're so, what you just said, you know, we keep score or we beat ourselves up for what we have done and, you know, and, and we forget that we can't earn what was done for us. Mm. It was a free gift. For sure. It was a free gift. And because it was free, mm. right, we don't have to do penance all the time. We just have to repent. We just go before the Lord and say, Lord, here's how I talk to him. Lord, I did it again. Mm. I'm sorry. And that's it. And he forgives me. And I know that he forgives me. But there are a lot of people who don't really quite understand mm. just what was done on that cross. And they complicate it. Yeah, they complicate yeah, they it. Complicate. So what I would like to do right now is make it very simple and put it in terms that most people, all people really could understand. I heard this explained to me like this one time, and it was this way. I commit a crime, and I have to go before a judge. 
Now, in this case, the crime would be my sins, right? And the judge would be God. So I had to go before the judge. And he says, how do you plead? And of course, I'm guilty. So I have to plead guilty. And he said, well, okay. He said, now here's the thing. You're either going to have to pay a $100,000 fine, mm. or you're just going to have to go to jail. Yeah. All right. And there I say, punishment. Right. And then I say, but Your Honor, I don't have $100,000. And he said, well, then you're going to go to jail. Mm. And at that point, mm. you come into the courtroom and you say, Your Honor, I want to pay that fine for her. And the judge says, I don't care who pays the fine as long as it's paid. As long as it's paid. And that's what Jesus did. That's such a good he example. He paid the fine for us. Such a good example. He, he died a horrible death because he loved us. Mm. And he knew what he was doing. You know, nobody coerced him into doing it. And, and that is a good one. I want to I interject about that. With a lot of things, a lot of wrong, um, a lot of misconceptions, let's put it that way, misconception about the gospel. Um, and, and it's definitely not God's work. It's definitely the work of the enemy. Like you just said, no coerce him. Nobody coerced Christ. You know, there are still people today believe that Jews crucified Jesus right. Christ. That Roman Empire crucified Jesus Christ. And uh, anything, whatever, you, you name it, they, they blame something. Somebody did. It's like somebody took him by force mm. and then nailed him. And Christ in the gospel, in the Bible, it's in your Bible, read it, says, no one takes my life from me. He said it, not me. He says it very clearly. I give my life voluntarily. It was love. There is nobody to blame. Right. Nobody to blame for Jesus' death. That's how God meant it. Right. And that's what Jesus do. Really what he did. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. He hung on that cross and what nailed him to that cross was love. Love. His love for us. And the religion always, it's your sin. Yeah, it's your no. sin. It, it was just, love. Hey, listen, it's love. Exactly mm -hmm. right. It was his love for us. Yes. It was the father's love for us because he knew being such a righteous mm. judge, being such a righteous so father, good. So good. he knew that if he didn't give us a way to repent and to be forgiven of those mm. sins, he would have to condemn us. Yeah, there's, he no, would other ha there's no other way no other because way. he is fair in all things. And when someone is fair in all things, all right, it's like. It's either or. It's either mm -hmm. or. You yeah. either did it or you didn't do it. Yeah. You either have to be yeah. punished or you're not punished. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is no middle ground. It's like there's no gray, if you will. Yeah. It's not in the gospel message. Not in the gospel no. message. Not so so and God so loved us, the Father so loved us, he didn't want to see us perish. He didn't want to see us the the, the creation that he created, mm. that he loved with mm. every inch of his being. <laughs> Whatever that looked like. <laughs> he loved us with every inch of his being. He had to make a way for us. And he sent his son, his son to die on that cross. He sent mm. love for us. That's love good. nailed Jesus to the cross. Love saved us. That's what saves us. And love resurrected him. And love resurrected, resurrected him. him. And yeah. love helps us get through every single day. Because Jesus is not only grace, he's love. He's love. This is so good when you started of the show, he said, it is, is finished. Uh, yeah. And to me, like you said right now, love, perfect love, mm. casts out all right. fear, right? right? We all know it. Oh my gosh, how much Christianity some of oh. us have packed into their self. Mm -hmm. And we are so robotic almost about memorizing certain scripture <laughs> without understanding right. what it really means. The, Christianity in shoe leather, like you like yeah. to say. Yeah. I love that saying. It means that we really truly live out every day understanding. Like you wake up, we want you to understand it is finished. Mm -hmm. You can't add, you can't take away. It is finished. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened yesterday, it is over. Mm -hmm. Today is the day. You yeah. live your best, you give your best, you do your best. Love covers multitude of, of sins. sins. Again, we pack that Christianism in ourselves, but do we understand what it means? Mm. 
Love covers multitude of, of sins. It's exactly what it does. It's exactly what it does. It's that love that God poured on Calvary applied to you, to yep. me, to yep. you today. It's applied yesterday. It applies today. It will apply tomorrow. It applies no matter what you do. And, but what you, I want to say something because at, at this point, I can guarantee somebody right now, oh boy, they are now giving us license to sin. I can yeah, guarantee yeah. somebody is already thinking <laughs> it. And we're going to tell you right now, we're going to debunk it. No, we're not giving anybody license to sin. First of all, since when anybody needed any license? Since when anybody needed permission from somebody else to commit sin? Right. As far as right. I know, nobody ever asked. Did nobody ask me? Nobody asked me. And I have not asked anybody, can I sin? So the whole concept of license to, to sin, it's absolutely um, null and void. It doesn't exist. Nobody asks for anything. People by nature are sinful people. They will sin. And that's why that love had to come in. So you need to change yeah. your way of thinking. You need to change it. It's not that we're giving license to <clears throat> sin. That's not what we're doing. No, what we're not. giving right now is license to accept the love and the grace. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Accept we it are, yeah. you know, in the Bible, that beautiful word, we beseech you. Some of people don't even understand what is the beseech. Well, that's what it means. We're asking you to accept the love. We beseech you all who is listening to us, accept that we are giving you permission. This is what we're doing right now by preaching that love, by preaching Christ crucified and it is finished, giving you that permission, give yourself a permission to accept love. Maybe your dad did not give you love. Maybe your mom <clears throat> didn't give you love. Maybe your friends are not loving you the way. Give yourself a chance to be loved by God. Amen. He stands right now. Amen. Amen. He did it. And you know, it's like if if he thought, if God thought that, we were going to walk, we were going to accept his son, and then we were never going to fall again. We were never going to sin again. He wouldn't say his mercies were new oh. every oh. single day. Absolutely. Because he knows us. He knows that we need those mercies every single day. Absolutely. He knows that we have to go before him every single day. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And like Maria said, we don't have to go before him for two weeks ago. It's for today. It's Lord, have mercy on me for today. Thank you for your mercy for today. Thank you for forgiving me. I mean, there are times I have to say that 12 minutes after I get out of bed, you know, because she's bad. <laughs> Not terribly bad. <laughs> Not terribly bad. <laughs> but, but we're trying to relate. We're trying to relate. Why are we are so open? Why are we so honest? Why are we talking to you like you're sitting with us right here? Because we are trying to relate to you that Christ and the Christianity message is everyday life. We're also trying to get across that. We are supposed to, as Christians, we are supposed to share this word. Mm. We mm. are supposed to evangelize, if you will. Yes. Okay. People are afraid of that word evangelize. Like they're afraid of what yeah. sin. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, you know, when you say evangelist, they think of Billy Graham. I could yes. never be Billy Graham. Well, you bet your life you could never be Billy Graham. But you can be Maria Haxton. Yeah. I can be Mary Catanzaro. We can go out there. I can share the love of Christ out there. Can I just take you just for a short trip through Romans? Okay, go ahead. All right. We're going to go now on the Roman road. Yeah, we're going through a short trip because we are, we are all called to go out and, and spread the gospel to the whole world. Now, that also makes people very uncomfortable. Nervous, because, yeah, for right, sure. Nervous. Because to the whole world, I can't, how am I gonna do that? Well, guess what? Sometimes your world is Publix. Sometimes your world is Kroger. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, like- Coffee shop. A, at the coffee shop, right. Mm -hmm. Coffee shop. It, so wherever it is that you are, it's your neighbors, it's your immediate vicinity. So this Roman road can be traveled wherever you are. And it's just, it's, it's this, <laughs> Romans 3.23 says, and this is exactly what we were talking about. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. All. Now in Greek, all, all means, all. Amen. <laughs> Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. 
That's it's scary. That's the fine. That's the, that's the, that's fine. the fine. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. I mean, how, how, how can you not get excited? That whatever you've done, whatever you've done, mm -hmm. I mean, whatever you've done, free gift is salvation. Amen. Free gift is forgiveness. Amen. Go. Romans. And, and Romans 10, 13 says, mm -hmm. whoever. whoever. Now let's just figure out who whoever is. It's you. It's me. It's you. It's the next door neighbor. It's every single person it's walking. It's the worst criminal the, that you know. It's every single person walking the face of the every earth. Every single one. Every single person. It doesn't matter what they did today. It doesn't matter what they did yesterday. And you know something right now, it just said, it just, we talk about always the people who do wrong, obviously, but it's also everyone who thinks that they've done nothing wrong. Okay, I was getting to that too. There you go. I was getting to that too. And it's, and it's those self-righteous people who think, they don't have anything to repent for. Some people right, say, say, I don't have anything I don't, to apologize I don't for. Have, I didn't do I anything didn't do wrong. Nothing. Yep. You know, well, anyway, that's who whoever, whoever is. So whoever, whoever will call upon the name of the mm. Lord will be saved. In other words, it is finished. finished. All right. And again, I, I, want to, I want to reiterate, for those of us who already know Christ is our Savior, it's time now. It's time because of the state of the world. It is time now that we ask that we go before the Lord and thank him for the courage and the boldness to go out and spread his word. And if the only way you know how to do it is to take him on the Romans road, you do that because it's very self-explanatory and it's easy for people to understand, right? And did you want to say something? Yeah, I want you actually to go ahead and that's, lead people. That, yeah. That's what I was yeah. about to do. Yeah. All right. And given that it is finished, and those of us who are Christians have to go out and spread the word, there are those of you who are sitting out there who have never accepted Christ as your Savior or who f have fallen away and need to rededicate. Well, now is the time. The Lord is calling you back home. He wants that heart that he created. And it's a real simple prayer. And in my spirit, I know that there are people out there who have that stirring in them right now. They know. Just come before the Lord humbly. And this, the prayer is real simple. It's Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me enough to die on that cross for the forgiveness of my sins. I am a sinner, Jesus, and I ask that you forgive me those sins. And I ask that you come into my life and you take the reins and you put me on that path to the destiny that you have for me. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Very simple. Extremely very simple. Right. And if you, and if it's, it is very simple. And if you have just prayed that for the first time or dedicated yourself, find yourself a Bible believing church. You need fellowship. You also need teaching and read your Bible at least 10 minutes a day. And one more thing, listen very closely, Miss Maria. Can you hear them? Rejoicing in heaven. In heaven. The angels, angels are rejoicing angels in heaven. Are rejoicing For in every heaven. soul that just got saved. Amen, Absolutely. amen. And I know that you're all out there. I know whether your name is Susan, Betty, Alice, Guinevere, whoever you are. All over the place, all, all over, over the, the world. place. It's, all it's over exciting. the world. Yeah. You know what's exciting also to me, and this times, you know, it's just, some some of you just listen to us here and see that we have a platform. We have a platform. We're on TV. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere. Uh, you can follow us on social media under Maria Haxton Ministries International on Facebook. Uh, every, I mean, you can find us. But some of you thinking, okay, how can I help? I'm going to give you an example. In Australia, there was a man, Dan Ritchie, years ago. That man single-handedly saved over 160 people from suicide. You know how he did it? He lived next to the cliff, then actually in Australia where he lived. The name of that cliff is Gap. It's funny, mm -hmm. the name is Gap. Oh, wow. So he lived in next to the cliff and he always saw people go. So what he do? He will take them and invite them to his home to have a cup of tea. He saved over 160 souls from committing suicide by simply talking and inviting into his home for cup of tea. That's it. Mm. So he 
responsible, Don Ritchie. You can Google him, it's an extraordinary story, Don Ritchie on Australia, in Australia. So what are we saying? What are we saying? What are we motivating you to? We're motivating you to be you, Amen. just you, nobody else. Wherever you are, a smile, a kind word, a hug, whatever you can, however you can, brighten up somebody's day and mm -hmm. bring the message of Christ. Tell them that you can do that for them because of Jesus. He did it for you, so you want to do it for them. Yeah. It, that's, it, it is so super simple. That man never looked down. Mr. Richie in Australia never saw his life any other way except just life. He happened to live next door to that cliff gap. Well, there is only one <laughs> gap yeah. between God and man, and that's our sin. And the only one to fill that gap is Jesus Christ. Amen. I never ever advise anybody to stand in the gap for anyone. <laughs> this is very uh, uh, revolutionary for some of you. Because in that gap, only Christ can stand. He is the only one who can withstand the whole hell against him. So when you pray, when you want to minister somebody, Ask the Lord to stand in the gap because he is the one. John told us in the scripture, only one mediator, only one between man and God and Christ Jesus the mm -hmm. Lord. So he's in the gap. Amen. So let's be those done riches to people. Yeah. yeah. Let's be Jesus in the skin to people, real people who are all around mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Let's don't overcomplicate. You see, when you get to heaven, God is not going to ask you, if you completed the assignment given to Mary or given to Maria, he is going to ask you, have you completed what he asked you to do? And that's yeah. all it is. A absolutely. And before we close for today, I really truly want to one more time to tell you, you are incredible. God loves you. You're amazing. The Lord died just for you. There is nothing you cannot do with God on your side. Amen. Amen. We know it because the word of God tells us that. We want to encourage you with all this massive amount of information. A lot of it is misinformation or even disinformation. Go to the word of God. Go to the Bible when you have a question. There is 99.9.9999. You will find the answer there. It truly is there in the word of God. Because he said, what did he say on the cross? It is, is finished. finished. So we want to wish you all the best. We want to bless you. We want to speak love over you, Amen. life over Amen. you, peace over you. Until we next, until we meet next time in the Real Talk with Marie and Friends. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.